Well, 2020 was obviously quite an exceptional year for Cargodec as, as well. Um, obviously, uh, early part of the year, the COVID already hit our demand and operations in China. And then by the Q2, it was a really global crisis for us. It impacted us many different ways. Obviously, for our customers, the environment was very challenging and we saw a sharp drop in, in our sort of deliveries and, and, and especially in order intake. Our own operations were affected. Some of our factories were closed for, for a while. Our suppliers uh, were also affected and many of their factories were closed and that obviously impacted our supply chain as well. So there were many challenges in, in there. Uh, then we started to see the demand pictures slightly recovering probably from May onwards and especially after September we actually saw strong recovery, especially in more sort of operational shorter cycle equipment in Hayab and also in Kalmar mobile equipment. However, for the larger capex investments, especially in the port and automation area, the market was slow. Good news is that none of those projects were cancelled, but clearly customers were hesitant to sort of pull the trigger and, and many of those investments have been pushed back for 2021. Also, the uh, shipbuilding industry was still very, very slow on, on, on 20, and that was, of course, visible in McGregor order intake. But overall, I would say that there are many positives to take away from 20, despite the exceptional circumstances. First of all, our safety remained on good level. Overall, our operational safety actually has been improving and starts to be in a very satisfactory level. And we didn't have any particular issues regarding pandemic in our own operations and our employees generally stayed healthy and, and safe throughout the year. Secondly, our operating profit was, uh, I would say, satisfactory considering the circumstances and, and uh, especially our cash flow was very strong. I think our operations returned very strongly and delivered a good cash flow, really improving our networking capital towards the end of the year. During the pandemic crisis, we also paid particular attention to our leadership and employee well-being, and that has also clearly paid off. If I look at our employee engagement numbers and our leadership scores that we sort of continuously monitor, we saw a clear improvement actually happening during 2020. Our services business held up very well and showed its resiliency during, during the crisis. Obviously, there were some decline caused by the access to site, etc. But overall, services revenue stayed at the high level and actually our profitability in services stayed at the very good level. Strategically also, even though overall our equipment revenues declined quite sharply, our sustainable product part portfolio or eco portfolio actually increased and it's now 24% of our revenues. So very clearly market demand uh, is, and our customers are requiring more and more sustainable solutions. And due to the investments we have done in the past years and that we still accelerated actually last year, are uh, paying off now and our capability to deliver eco-efficient, electrified, automated, robotized solutions is paying off for us. And then obviously last year also, uh, both companies um, uh, shareholder meetings approved the merger with Conecranes. That is an important strategic step for both companies. Let's start with the Kalmar, which was really twofold in a sense. If I talk about the uh, uh, mobile equipment business, the sort of uh, lighter, smaller uh, container handling, uh, lifting equipment, uh, uh, strong drop in demand uh, during the Q2 that was then visible towards the end of the year revenues. But the com uh, from profitability point of view, the business did very, very well. We were able to adapt our cost and being able to show uh, also how uh, cycle proof that business is with the strong services remaining uh, almost at the last year's level. On the other hand, on our project and automation business, that was a year to forget in many ways. The revenues were in a relatively high level. But due to the changes in our supply chain away from Chinese joint venture, due to the extra costs coming from the COVID, etc., the business was not at the satisfactory profitability. And secondly, also the order intake was um, exceptionally low because customers were not clearly willing to sort of make uh, higher capex decisions during the la last year. That sort of combination of lower revenue and a more profitable business and then high revenue due to the order backlog uh, led to the uh, small, uh, lower than normal uh, uh, proportional operating profit in Kalmar last year. 
In Hayaba, I have to say that I'm satisfied with the performance. Uh, obviously, the COVID crisis hit the Hayab demand, especially strongly on Q- Q2 and then over the summer months. But from September onwards, our demand actually exceeded last year's demand. And obviously, we ended the uh, year with the Q4 with an extraordinarily high all-time record order intake. Also, I think we've been able to prove that Hayab is actually not that cyclical as maybe some of the uh, uh, people have feared. And actually, despite the drop about 20% in our revenues, our proportional operating profit was at the same level as it was previous year as well. So again, services were at the remaining at relatively high level, and we are able to show that our business model can flex in up and down turns there as well. MacGregor, I already mentioned again, uh, very happy with the 24 million result improvement. The cost programs we have drive, driven, there are yielding results. Our project execution is improving and, and, and services business obviously declined, but was still at, at a relatively good operating profit and was protecting the business. And it's good to see MacGregor back in black numbers in the second half of the year. It's a difficult year to predict. If I look at the demand um, uh, uh, picture coming from the Q, sort of end of Q3, Q4, especially in our more sort of shorter cycle equipment, we saw a very strong return on there. Also, a lot of our equipment is today connected, so we can actually look at the real time, the activity of our customers, and, and, and both in North America and Europe, the activity level is actually at the same level or slightly better than it was a year ago um, in, in now in January. And, and also we have seen the uh, demand picture to stay r- strong. Obviously, there are still risks related to that one, and we are sort of far away from the sort of um, turning the corner yet on COVID, although the vaccination programs are now starting as well. So a lot of uncertainty, but overall, I'm, I'm uh, optimistic about that one, and I think there, um, we, we believe that we can actually improve our operating profit on uh, 2021 uh, compared to 20. Uh, uh, MacGregor has turned a corner in, in many ways. Uh, the demand picture in Hayab and Kalmar mobile equipment is stronger at the moment. And then also I do believe that the larger CapEx investments that were held back um, during the 20 will be returning. As said, none of those projects has been cancelled. And if anything, I think this uh, COVID situation has sort of strengthened the belief that the automation and robotization and also the sustainability are directions that our customers would like to go.